Today in Draw My Life, Barbie and Ken Killers. Abusers, rapists, and murderers. That's Paul Kenneth Bernardo and Carla Leanne Homolka. Nevertheless, despite being in the police sight, they managed to dodge all suspicions during six years of crimes thanks to their adorable looks. At first, Paul Bernardo started working alone. His first crime was carried out on the night of May 4, 1987, in Scarborough, a suburb of Ontario, Canada. And in just a few months, he had raped three women. And so on, on October 17, 1987, Carla and Paul met. Carla, a 17-year-old animal lover, was dazzled by the confidence of the 22-year-old, who had just graduated as an accountant. So, they began a relationship of strong dependence. He hid his sexual predator facet and went onto the street to spread terror. His victims were teenage girls getting off bosses whom he threatened with a knife. Later, his acts were extremely violent. By the end of 1987, his crimes were already five, and he became known in the media as the Scarborough Rapist. Two years later, he had raped or attempted to rape at least 19 women. Although he was interrogated on several occasions, he always managed to slip away. And where was Carla while all this was going on? She lived immersed in her toxic relationship. In 1989, she finished her studies and was hired as an assistant in a veterinary clinic, but was fired shortly after taking some anesthetics. On December 24, 1989, her work situation stopped worrying her because Paul asked her to marry him, making that day the best day of her life. However, a lot happened before they got married. On June 17, 1990, Paul committed his first murder. He assaulted young Elizabeth Payne and then kidnapped, beat, raped, and strangled her. Another young man named Robert Baltabish was wrongly convicted for this crime, but was eventually acquitted. One day, Carla, who could no longer bear the suspicions towards her fiancé, confronted him. Knowing how madly in love she was, he confessed all his crimes, the rapes and the murder. Carla was horrified but didn't want to lose him, so she decided to support him blindly. Not only did she allow the attacks on her, but then she listened to the crimes perpetrated against other women without doing anything. The thing got even shadier when Paul set his next target on Tommy Homolka, Carla's younger sister. He justified his desires by telling her that she wasn't a virgin when they met. Thus, the young woman decided to give her fiancé her sister's virginity for Christmas. To do this, he broke the locks in Tammy's room and gave her pills mixed with alcohol. He then applied halothane, an anesthetic, to her mouth and nose. While Paul was abusing her, Carla was filming. However, something did not go as expected. Tammy began to vomit, and as she was unconscious, she choked. They tried to revive her without any luck, so they dressed her, removed the evidence, and called 911. Unfortunately, the young woman didn't survive. Surprisingly, despite the halothane stains on her skin, the police decided to believe the killer's version. Tammy had drank too much and suffered from an alcoholic coma, so she choked on her own vomit. After this terrible event, the couple's crime continued. They performed rituals and recorded them. On June 15, 1991, Paul Bernardo took Leslie Mahaffey home. They kept her locked for 24 hours, during which they abused her atrociously and finally killed her. Then, they chopped up her body and threw it into a nearby lake. Days later, on June 29th, Carla and Paul arrived at their wedding in a big horse-drawn carriage. Then, they spent their honeymoon in Hawaii. During those days, they found Leslie's body in the lake. A year later, in April 1992, the couple's next victim was Kristen French. They tricked her and forced her into her car. After three days of torture, they murdered her, threw her body in a ditch, where it was found a few days later. This crime was linked to that of Leslie. It was the last murder committed by Barbie and Ken Killer. In 1993, Carla, tired of the abuse she received from Paul, began to pull away from him. In addition, the police were hot on their heels. Months later, they discover a DNA sample that linked Paul to the Scarborough rapes. Carla decided to participate in the investigation by testifying against her husband. This collaboration meant that she only received 12 years in prison, despite having perpetrated or being an accomplice to some of those crimes. With this difference in both sentences, the improper use of evidence and the nature of the crimes, 
the Barbie and Ken killer's case was full of controversy. Did you like this video? Leave us a super like, subscribe, and tell us what other cases you want us to talk about. See you next time.